We have your Bible with you today. Amen. Did you enjoy the song? Amen. Amen. It was a soft song, but the message of the song and the verse that Brother Adam read, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his own soul? And what we need is uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bibles. And we will be reading just uh, uh, two verses here. We will be reading verse number 30 and verse number 31. I plan for this message to be preached in the afternoon. But uh, we will change the message. We will use this message for this morning. And the afternoon message for the morning message for the afternoon. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number 30 and 31. Say Amen if you found it. Amen. Let's read all together. If you don't have a Bible, I think it's in the screen. Let's read this all together ready to begin. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the heart of God perished not with them that believed not, when she had seen the spies with peace. This morning I'd like to preach or speak on the subject to go off of Rahab's faith. My prayer to the Lord is for members of the Rahab Baptist Church to grow in our faith. Amen. To grow in our faith. Because your usefulness in the ministry of the Lord depends on the growth of your faith. When your faith has grown, everything in your life will grow. Your usefulness to the Lord. And the Bible also tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse number 6, that without faith, it is what? Impossible. impossible. It is impossible to please God. You can never please God without faith. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another time to come together as a church to worship you in spirit. That's why we do not have idols in this room. And in truth, that means in your word. Lord, I pray that uh, you will minister to us again with your word today. That the words we will hear will have a great impact in our lives. And it will help us to grow in our faith. Faith that will please you. And faith that will help us accomplish, accomplish great things for your glory and for your honor. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Now, this is Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible tells us of uh, men and women. Can you please turn on this phone? Tells us of uh, men and women who were used of God because they had great faith. Amen. Amen. Are you with me today? Amen. So, if you will start in verse uh, in the in the earlier verses, verse four, for example. We have the name of Abel, and verse 5 we have Enoch, and then Abram, and Sarah, and many other Bible characters that were mentioned here. They were used by God. These are ordinary people just like you and I, but they were used by God because they had what? Great faith. But we have to understand that their faith did not become great overnight. It went through the process of what? Growing. And that's the challenge that I would like to give you today. For us to look at our faith and the question is, are we growing in our faith uh, to God? So one of those uh, Bible characters that were mentioned here, especially in our text, is a lady, it's a woman named Rahab. And the Bible says here, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. We will go to the story uh, as the message progresses. And in verse number 31, the Bible says, By faith, the heart of Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spice, um, when she had received the spice with peace. Now, four things that I want to share to you about her faith. Number one, her faith was a saving faith. 
I look at my four words here about her faith. Her faith was a saving faith. If you will take a close look at verse number 31, makikita natin dito anong klaseng tao, anong klaseng kabay sa Rehab. When you look at verse number 30, you will find what kind of a person Rehab was. Verse number 31 says, By faith, the what? How did the Bible describe Rehab? She was a what? She was a harlot. She was a prostitute. That means she was a sinner. She was a sinner just like you and I. But the amazing thing about this story was when the city of Jericho collapsed, when the city of Jericho was destroyed, many people in the city were destroyed, but Rahab was saved. And the Bible tells us in verse number 31, the Bible says, By faith the heart of Rahab perished not. That means she was spared. She did not die along with the along with other people. With them that believed not. Do you see that? Do you, do you see that? Why were they destroyed? Why were they killed? Why did they die? Why did they perish? It's very clear because they did not believe. And the reason that Rahab was, was uh, spared or she was saved was because of her faith. Because she believed. Her faith saved her. Let me tell you this morning that uh, the Bible says that all of us are sinners. Amen. Romans 3, verse number 10, the Bible says there is what? None righteous, no, not one. I don't know how many people we have in this room this morning, but every single person in this room this morning is a sinner before God. Amen. Including the one who study in front of you. There is none righteous, no, not one. In verse number 23, the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 12, the Bible says, As by one man, who is that man? Elam. Sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sin. Folks, we are all sinners. Amen? Amen. We are all sinners. And because we are sinners, we are doomed to hell. We descend to go to hell because of our sins. We cannot enter heaven because uh, we are because of our sins. But God made a way for you and I to be saved. The same way that Rahab was saved, you and I could be saved from going to hell by simply believing in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Amen. Look at the Bible in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. The Bible tells us here in verse number 15, John chapter 3, verse number 15, the Bible says that whosoever what? Believe it in whom that is faith. Should not what? Yeah. Perish but have yeah. eternal life. Verse number 16. For God so that the word that he gave his only begotten son. Who is he? The Lord Jesus Christ that whosoever what? Believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse number 18. He that believeth on him. Who is him? The Lord Jesus Christ, he that believeth in him, is not what? Amen. It's not condemned, meaning you will not go to hell. It's not condemned. But he that what? Believeth not, is what? Amen. Condemned already. There are only two groups of people here this morning. It's either you have believed, you have put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior, or not. Verse number 36, the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son, have eternal life, has have everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth in him. Amen? Amen. So we are sinners like Rahab, and she was saved because of her faith. Other people perish, the Bible says, because they believe not. Unlike the people of Jericho, you will either be saved or you will either perish. 
It all depends on what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you will believe in Jesus Christ, that what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, that his death, his burial, and resurrection is more than enough to save you, if you trust him and him alone as your personal Savior, you will be saved. Amen. It all starts here. Number two. Let's go to the second. Rahel's faith, number one, is a saving faith. Number two, it was a sanctifying faith. It was a sanctifying faith. Maybe by the Lord can take that in the uh, can, uh, type that in our screen. It was a sanctifying faith. In, in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. Look at your Bible, Matthew chapter 1 verse number 5. Here we find something about, about Rahab. What kind of a woman was she? In the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us that Rahab was a what? She was a harlot. She was a wicked woman. She, she was selling her body. Okay? She was a prostitute. But she was saved by the grace of God. Amen? Amen. And everyone who is saved is saved by the grace of God. Verse number 5. And someone begat the worst of Raka. This is the same as Raka. She became one of the ancestors of the Lord Jesus Christ. See? Rahab was saved. Listen to this. But she did not remain a harlot after she was saved. Her life was changed. Amen? 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 Amen. Her life was changed. All of us are sinners. I don't know what your vices are. Hindi ko alam po ano yung mga pinagagawa natin in our life. But every single person here, we are sinners and we do things that probably only you know. We are all sinners. But you know what? When we come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if a human be in Christ, he is a what? He is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yeah. Rahab was a harlot, but she did not live in a harlot. Her life was changed. And folks, that is exactly what God wants to do in your life. The faith that saved you will also be the faith that will sanctify you. If you are, saved, if you are truly saved, it will be evident. It will be obvious because there is a change in your life. Amen? You cannot claim to be saved to be saved and be the same person. Hindi mo pwede sabihin ligtas ka pero ikaw pa rin yung dati. You cannot do that. Because if you are saved, if you became a child of God, you will be transformed. Because the word of God that saved you will also be the word of God that will transform you. But then, if a man be in Christ, he is a what? He is a new creature. That's why we sing that song. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to do, I do them no more. Sorry. The things I used to do, I do them no more. There's a great change since I was born again. The words I used to say, I say them no more. The words I used to say, I say them no more. The words I used to say, I say them no more. There's a great change since I was born again in the place. The place I used to go, I go there no more. The place I used to go, I go there no more. The place I used to go, I go there no more. There's a great change since I was born again. Amen? Amen. Is there a change in your life? Amen. Do you still say the same words? Ikaw pa rin ba yung dating nagmumura? Kung ikaw ay nagmumura dati, hindi na dapat niya. Right. If you used to sing rock music, you know, that is not godly music. If you, sing, if you used to sing worldly and rock music, you don't sing rock music anymore. You're not singing hymns for the Lord. Amen. If you used to smoke before, you don't smoke now. Why? Because you are a child of God. Amen. If you used to drink alcohol before, you don't drink alcohol now. Because 
because you are a child of God. Right. If you are a fornicator before, you are a fornicator now. Why? Because you are a child of God. Yeah. If you used to be a bitter person, ikaw yung dating tao na magaling din, you always have hatred in your heart. Now that you are a child of God, everything has been changed. Amen. Her faith saved her. Her faith also sanctified her. She did not remain the same person. Sometimes you see people who claim to be saved, but you put a big question mark whether they are really saved or not. I heard, I, I read this in a book I think many years ago. Now, sabi niya, if you see something that walks like a duck, have you seen a duck walk? Okay. Like Brother Samuel. <laughs> and it looks like a duck. And when it swims, you put it in water, it swims like a duck. And the sound, it quacks like a duck. It must be a what? Could it be a horse? You know, I saw something, it looks like a duck, it swims like a duck, it quacks like a duck, but I tell you, it's a horse. Folks, it's not possible. If you see something that walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, and swims like a duck, it must be a what? It must be a duck. So if you see a person who talks like an unsafe person, who goes to places where an unsafe person goes, and he sings songs that an unsafe person sings, what do you think is that person? He, must, he might be unsafe, an unsafe person. Because if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Yeah. And number three, we learned that her faith was a saving faith. Her faith was a sanctifying faith. It transformed her. It changed her. And by the way, don't worry about changing your life. You can change your life. It is God who will change your life. Amen. It is like water that flows. As long as kapag hindi mo hinaraman yung tubig, it will naturally flow. Just allow the Holy Spirit to do His work in your life and the Holy Spirit will change you. When we will consider the young man cleanse his way by taking him to according to the word. Jesus said in John 15, 3, Now you are clean through the word which has spoken unto you. Amen? Amen. There is one person here, he is listening in. Um, several years ago, we went and picked him up in a Bible study. I was with Brother Jesil. And he knows who the person is. The moment he comes to the van, he took his the van, and he was already with us, and he was calling all his girlfriends. Yeah. You know, he, he was telling us he has four girlfriends. Apat na asawa, I think, or five. And he's, he was very being proud about it. And his vices, his smoking and drinking and all those things. But you know, naligtas siya. Amen. He received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Amen. And now, kahit sa pananamit, even in the way he, now he wears his clothing, he is different. I do not know in his private life, he's, he's still doing those things, but I see a great change in his life. You know why? Because of his faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, Nobody, you don't change like black to white. It is gradual, but little by little, you see the change in a person's life who is in Jesus as their Savior. And number three, her faith was a stable faith. Her faith was a stable faith. Go back to the book of Joshua, verse number two. This is what Rahab said when these spies came to her house. And she said unto them, those two men, they came to her house in the middle, in, at night time, see, because she was a hard lot, and uh, it was, it was uh, natural for men to go see her at night. And she had said, and she said unto them, I know that the Lord, you underline those words, and then go to verse number 10. How did she know? For we have heard. That is verse number 10. Look at verse number 11, the last part of verse number, verse number 10. Because of you, for the Lord your God, what did she say? He is the God in heaven above and in earth beneath. She became a believer. Amen? Amen? Because of what she heard. And by the way, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. That's why you should come to church and listen to the word of God so you, your faith will grow. Your faith will never go without the word of God. Amen. And 
And so she she knew why because she heard and she believed. Now they were here. Let's say this is Jericho. This is takes right here. It was a very strong city. The walls were very. The wall. Several vehicles could no, pass on top of that wall. It was a very tall wall. It's a very strong city. And the Israelites were on the other side of the Jordan. Now the Jordan River was a very big uh, river. Sometimes when it flows, it's like uh, 1.3 uh, miles wide. Malalim to begin. How can they cross the Jordan River? That's one challenge. And if they do cross, how will they conquer the city of Jericho? The walls were very thick. The walls were very high. And the people of Jericho could simply have stones on top and would drop into the Israelites. How could they destroy the city of Jericho? It seemed like it was impossible. But Rahab believed that nothing is impossible with that. Rahab knew that nothing is too hard for the Lord. You read those verses that is in your notes. Folks, let me remind you this morning that we have a great God. Amen. We have a powerful God. Nothing is impossible Amen. with God. Amen. You may have a problem in your life. It may seem impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. Amen. No person is too hard for God to say. Maybe you are thinking of somebody, of a friend, and in your mind, maybe you think, ah, it's very impossible for that person to be saved. He's so wicked. Folks, no person is too hard for God to say. Amen. No problem is too hard for God to solve. Kahit ang problema niyo ka, God can solve that problem if He wants to. And there is no need that is too hard for God to provide. And there is no prayer request that is too hard for God to answer because we are serving a great God. Amen. Your commitment natin sa missions, I have committed almost 50% of my allowance for faith promise. But I have no problem. You know what? I have a great God. Amen. I have proven Him in the past many times. And He is a great God. He can and He will supply our needs. Amen. Number four. Her faith was a saving faith. You see how her faith is growing? It was a sanctifying faith. It changed her. And it was a stable faith. She didn't say, Ah, I think it's impossible. How will you cross that river? And if you do cross, how will you destroy the city? You have no weapons. But because of what she heard, she believed. And number four, her faith was a sympathizing faith. It was a sympathizing faith. I want to stress number four. What I mean here is that she cared about others. Go to your Bible in Joshua chapter 2 and see what happened here. Before Pinalis knew yung mga spies, she made a request. Get this. Verse 12. Now therefore I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shewed you kindness, that you will also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. She was saying, guys, I helped you, I was good to you, I was kind to you, I hid you. Now will you please do me a favor? Will you do something for me? Lord, verse 13. That you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from what? She knew that the city of Jericho will be destroyed. She believed that. And she made one very important request. She said, please save us. My dad, my mom, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have. My friends. Now, please read this story when you go home. I want you to look at verse number, verse number 18. Verse number 8, or verse number 15. Let's go to 18. Behold, when we come into the land, this is the instruction. Thou shalt bind this line, yung tali, na kung saan sila bumaba, 
Light of scarlet thread in the window when thou which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy thy I want you to know that you will bring. Thou shalt what? Bring. That is our duty. Thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and what else? All that is father's household household where? Where? Home and the world. And to thee. Lord verse number 19. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the streets, his blood shall be upon his head. And we will be guiltless, and whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. What did I say? Rahab said, Would you please help me, please save my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, and everything that they have. And the spy said, Okay, let's make a deal. When we come, or when we live, you bring your dad, you bring your mom, you bring your brothers, you bring your sisters. Home unto thee. That means the all of Jericho will be destroyed. Are you listening? Amen. But there was only one place in the entire city of Jericho where they will be saved. And that was the place of Rahab. <coughs> only one place. She knew what will happen to Jericho. They will perish. It will be destroyed. She knew her responsibility. She knew her duty. But the question is, what do you think did she do about it? Well, let's go to Joshua chapter 6. We will fast forward the story. Joshua chapter 6 now. In verse number 18. Joshua chapter 6. You can read the story here. Starting with verse number 8. The instruction was this. God told the people, they crossed the Jordan River already. When they stepped on the Jordan River, the water stopped. That was a miracle. In the Red Sea, Moses stretched his rod and the water parted. It means they parted before they stepped down. But here, they have to step down before the water was stopped. So, nung pag-apak nila doon sa tubig, talagang hinarangan ng Panginoon. Wala ng tubig. So, they crossed the Jordan River. And God's instruction was this. The Lord said to Joshua, For six days, get this, because sometimes the story na naririn natin so, For six days, I want you to go around Jericho one time. For six days. First day, one third. Second day, one third. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth day, one third. And on the seventh day, how many turns? Seven turns. And God said, I don't want you to, to, to say a word. That was a hard thing to do. Especially for ladies. <laughs> They went around the city of Jericho the seventh day once and twice and thrice, four times, five times, six times, seven times. And God said, when you complete the seventh turn, the Lord said, I want you to shout. I want you to shout. It was not recorded. In the Gatula Nung Gideon study, the sword, the Lord of Gideon, that's not what they shouted here. But God said, I want you to shout. Well, they shouted, and when they did that, the city of Jericho collapsed. Verse number 18, or verse number 20, now let's go to verse number 20. So the people shouted when the prince of blew with, with trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, that the people uh, heard the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass, with the edge of the sword. Verse number 22. 
But Joshua said unto the two men that had spied out the country, tignan nyo, go into the harlot's house. Because all of the walls collapsed, but there was one portion that left standing. And you know kung ano ano yun? It was the what? Place of prayer. And bring out there the woman and all that she had and she swore unto her. 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out who? Rahab. Rahab. And her. Say it loud. And her. Father. Father and her. Mother, mother and her. Brethren and all that, 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 that she had. And they brought out all of her what? Kindred. And let them without the camp of Israel. Wow. The city of Jericho was destroyed, but Rahab's place left is standing. And when the spies came to the house, so many people were in the house. May, would you please help me, May? Come on. Okay. Yeah. You help me. You would be my Rahab today. Come on, come on, come on. Bring some. May come. Okay. Okay. Bring it up. Take your time. 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 Okay. That's your time. That's your time. Okay. Bring your time. Your time is like he's uh, as old as you are. Go, brother Jun. Come on, come on. Okay. Come on, brother Jun. Okay. May. Get your mom. You know what I mean? Okay. Come on, come on. Okay. But brother Jun, I can't tell you that. Come on. Okay. Sige, iba na muna ang ano. Sino, sino yung ginagawa? Mag-cooperate kayo. Hindi, bring your mom. Bring your mom. Yan. May, go get your brothers. Plural, brothers. Sige, ito mo lang, akit na yun sila. Kung ayaw nyo lang makit, sige lang, hayaan mo lang din. Okay, go get your brothers, brothers. Yan. Brothers. Okay? Hindi ko sila aming uncle. Okay, diba? Brothers, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, brothers. Okay, your brothers. Some more, some more. Okay. And then your sisters. Sisters. Would you help her? Ito yung mga group po dito. Makit na kayo. Itong group. Come, come up. Brother Philip, you know the rest. You come. Brother Ian, you come. Sister Lega, you come. Tulungan na lang natin si Mary. I just want you to see the picture here. When the city of Jericho was destroyed, many people were in Rahab's place with her. Now, let us go back to the first point. What kind of a lady was Rehab? She was a If somebody comes to you who was a harlot, would you believe what she is saying? I believe that after this spies left, she went to her dad and convinced her, you come to my place. The city of Jericho was a big place, but it is not safe over there. It's not safe over there. It's not safe for it. Her friends are. It's not safe over there. Is only one place where it is safe. Can you imagine Rahab going to her dad and said, "Dad, you come to my house because the city of Jericho will be destroyed, and you will be, you will die here. You come to my place because my place is the only safe place." And she has the same message for everyone. Could you imagine some people probably saying, "Who are you? You're a harlot." Okay. Why do you tell us all these things? How do you know all these things? Let me remind you that when you tell people about the Lord, many of them will not listen to you. Right. But some will. <coughs> but some will. And by the grace of God, she gathered this group of people. Why? She knew what will happen to Jericho. She knew what they were saying. And she knew her responsibility. And she fulfilled her responsibility. Amen. Amen. We know what is happening to this world one day. We know that the world will be destroyed one day. We know that there is a judgment day one day. Amen. Amen. And there is only one place where people are safe. And that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. No, there is no safety in another, in another person. People who have been saved in Virgin Mary. People who cannot be saved in other religion, there is only one place, and that is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you know your responsibility, and I know my responsibility, because Jesus said, Go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations. Go ye and preach the gospel. We know our responsibility. 
But my question is, when the time comes that Jesus Christ will return, how many souls will you present to the Savior and say, Lord, these are the people who would listen to your message that you gave me. Rahab's faith was a saving faith. She was a sinner, but she was saved because she believed. Her faith changed her. It was a sanctifying faith. She did not remain a sinner. Her faith was a stable faith. She, she believed that nothing is too hard for God. And her faith was a sympathizing faith. She cared about others. Do you care about other people? How many people have come to know the Savior already because of your life? Folks, Rahab is a picture of you and I today. You are like Rahab. I am like Rahab. We are like Rahab. If we have the faith to believe and our faith will grow, God can use you like she did Rahab. From a sinner to a soul winner. Amen. God will and God can use your life. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that you have given us today about this lady, a wicked woman, but she was saved because of her faith and much was accomplished because of her faith. Help me be seen to be that kind of a person. We are sinners and we know that. Change us, dear Lord, through your word. Give us the faith to believe that nothing is impossible with you. Help us, Lord, to have compassion upon others so that others may come to know Jesus Christ because of us, because of our faith. Bless the invitation in Jesus' name. Every head are bowed, eyes are closed, no one looking around.